Hello and welcome to Flo's Crafty Crochet. Today we're going to be looking at how to start a granny square from the very beginning. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make a slip knot. So the way I make a slip knot is I put my finger on the tail and wrap it around. Comes behind and can you see the long piece of yarn that's still attached to the ball of wool? I pull it up through the middle and create a slip knot like that. You can create a slip knot in whatever way you feel comfortable doing it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to chain four. So you wrap your yarn around your hook and pull this loop over the top of this one. Like so. And you do that for a total of four times. As a beginner, sometimes the loop won't come over. So if you want, feel free to use your fingers to pull the loop up over the top. Once you have a chain four, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to create a circle. So you're going to take the yarn and you're going to insert it onto the top of the hook going through the very first chain that you made. You're then going to create a slip stitch. This is done by putting the yarn over the hook and pulling through everything that is on the hook so that you're left with one loop. And if you pull that apart slightly, you should see that there's a little hole there. It's this little hole here that we are now going to be working into. So what you're going to start off with is another chain three. One, two, three. That chain three is going to act as your first treble. In this granny square, we're going to be working three groups. Sorry, three trebles in each group. So that's one treble already done. Now we're going to do our treble stitch. Yarn over into the large hole. Pull the yarn through. Put, take the yarn over. Take off the middle two. Put the yarn over and take off the last two. So yarn over, go into the large hole, pull the yarn through the hole. So now you'll have three loops on, put the yarn over, take off the middle two, put the yarn over, take off the last two. And that's our first group made. So you'll see you have your chain three that's acting as a treble, the second treble here, and the third treble here. In between every group of treble that we make, we're going to chain one. So chain one now, like so. We're going to work back into this big hole and we're going to make another three trebles. So doing it exactly the same way as before, yarn over, into the hole, pull the yarn through, yarn over, take off two, yarn over, take off two. And again, one more time, take off two, take off two. And that's our second group of three created. One, two, three. So we're going to chain one again. And we're going to go back into that hole again for a third time. One, two, three. Our third group is now created. So we're going to chain one and we're going to make our fourth and final group. One. two, three. Now we need to do a chain one. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to connect this group to the first group that we made. And we're going to do this by using a slip stitch. And we're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three. So there's the first chain, the second chain, and here is the third chain. So that's where we're going to work into. So we're going to put our hook through that loop. We're going to take it and we're going to put it through the top of that loop. And then we're going to put our yarn over, pulling through this loop and the next, like so. And that finishes off our very first round. So you should be left with one, two, three, four groups of three trebles with a chain one in between each of the groups. Now we're going to be moving on to the second row. So this time we're going to use stitch markers and the stitch markers are used just to help us keep our place. So as always, we're going to start with a chain three. And this time we're going to go back into the hole that's just below where the chain is coming out of. Here's the chain coming out and this is the hole below that we're talking about. So you're going to put your yarn over. You're going to go down into that hole, pull up. Yarn over, take off two, yarn over, take off two. And then do it again because we want three trebles in that first space. 
So that's our first group of three made. At this point, I want you to take a stitch marker and put it in the top of the chain three. So here's your chain three. One, two, three. In the top of that third, I want you to put your stitch marker. The reason we do that is because that is both the end and the beginning of the next row. So if we have a stitch marker in there, we know that that is where we have to finish off. So that's half of our first corner made. Now we're going to go over into the next hole, this one here. And in that hole, we're going to place two corners. Corners are made up of three treble crochets, a chain one and three treble crochets. So off we go. Into the hole, one treble two trebles, three. And again, like I said, each corner is made up exactly the same way. It's made up of three trebles, a chain one, and three trebles right back into that same hole. And that's creating a corner. Okay, so yarn over into the hole, pull through, take off two, take off two. And that's that corner complete. So now we're working forward into the next corner. In we go. One treble. Two. Three. Now we have the three done. We need to chain one. And we go back into the same hole. And we create three. One. Two. Three. We have a second corner complete. Our group of three. A chain one and a group of three. Moving on into the next, we do a group of three. One, two, three, chain one, and do our treble in again. One, two, three. This time, this is our very last corner, and it's different. So you can see that I have one group of three, then I have two groups of three, two groups of three, and two groups of three. So for this last corner, it's like a bridge. It's like completing uh, the bridge. So what you have to do is you have to join them. So we'll work away with doing our first set of three trebles. One, two, three. And as always, we need a chain one. But this time, instead of working another group of three trebles in, we've already got it already in this group. So what you need to do at this point is you need to remove your stitch marker. The place that the stitch marker was in is where you're going to slip stitch. So insert your hook into the place that the stitch marker came out of and pull through everything on your hook. That closes off your piece of work and it should have a square shape by this stage. So you should see two groups of three in every corner the whole way around. Now we're going to work on the third row and show you how that is done. So as always, we chain three to begin. You do two trebles back down into the hole below because we're only creating one half of the corner at this point. Now that I have my group of three, I also want you to replace your stitch marker in the top of the chain three so that it's a guide for you when you know to finish. This time, Instead of immediately doing a corner, we have a group just to put in here. So personally, I don't like putting chains in between the groups because I find it makes the holes quite big. And especially if your blanket's going to be for little fingers, the bigger the hole, the more likely the child will get their fingers trapped in the holes. So the only time I chain is whenever I am in a corner in a granny square and I always only chain one. So I want you to take your hook and place three trebles in that next large hole. One, two, three. And that's that bit complete. Now we're working over to here. And this is a corner. So every corner is the same. Every corner is made up of three trebles, a chain one, and another set of three trebles. So there's one group, a chain one, and then our three trebles, all in the same spot. Moving forward, we're coming to the space here. So in this space here, we're only putting a group. We're not chaining, we're just putting a group of three trebles. Two, 
three. And again, we're moving on into the corner. And a corner as always, three trebles, a chain one, three trebles. And that is basically your granny score. In your granny score, you just keep going in continuous rounds until you grow it to the size that you want it to be. Every corner is going to be exactly the same and every hole is going to be the same as well. All you're going to be putting in every space is three trebles. Every corner space will have three trebles, a chain one and three trebles. So they're quite simple once you get the hang of it. The tricky bits with a granny is finishing off your row and beginning a new row. That's why I like to use a stitch marker so you can clearly see where everything begins and ends. I'm just going to show you one last time here. We're back round to finish off this corner group. So we're working in here. We're going to only place three trebles. One, two, three. And again, chain one. And then we're just going to connect it in where that stitch marker is. So if we were finished, and that is all the size of a, of a square that we wanted, then that would be us finished at this point. You just snip off your yarn and pull right through. However, if you want to create a next row, what you do is you chain three. You work down into the space where the chain is coming out from. So down below and you place three trebles all together, including your chain. So your chain counts as one. The treble is two and the treble is three. You place your stitch marker in the top of the chain three and instead of creating another chain three group, you work on across, creating three groups of trebles as you're going across. And you just keep working like that the whole way around. And as you can see, each row is an increase. So the previous row, we only had one group of three. This time we have two groups of three. Okay, and you just continue on working. Until you get back round. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, can you please leave a like and please subscribe to see further videos from Flo's Crafty Crochet. Thank you.